Hello everyone, today I want to talk about something a little bit different and that is my new plugin uh, used to generate uh, procedurally biomes in Godot engine. So as you can see uh, this is a um, pretty simple scene with a pretty poor <laughs> models um, but um, you get the idea uh, that is covered in a lot of trees, bushes and grass so you can also draw it so you can see this is a H-terrain of Xylan Hitma plugin and I just need to select a brush and I can add new trees and plants okay uh, I can also of course decrease the opacity so I set up it something really low and I can sprinkle it, you know, like something like that. Okay, so how you can uh, create uh, that kind of uh, stamp uh, that is used to generate this procedural scenes? So that's really simple. You just need to go to this biome tab on top and the first thing you need to do is to add a render so um, each plant in our biome uh, is constructed using this subset node so each, uh, each type of plant has its own subset node and of course each subset node needs a mesh right now it only supports a load zero but it will be added in the future uh, loading okay and uh, we need to set up our uh, mesh so we go to asset test and grass and as you can see we have a preview of our mesh and uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up our color preview we'll use green this example so the color, this color will correspond to the circles on this uh, renderer preview and uh, each circle represents a different kind of plant so different kind of subset so for example we, we need to set up also a footprint so this is the size, this is the radius of these circles so the smaller the radius, the smaller the plant, so the larger number of them there will be in our stamp. Okay, so for this one I set up it as 15, and I set up a frequency pretty low, because um, the plants are really small, so what the <coughs> plugin will try to do is, to f uh, is it will try to fill these empty spaces <coughs> in the second pass uh, as much as it can. So it will use much more uh, of the small small nodes uh, compared to these bigger ones. Okay, so as a matter of fact, I know that this mesh is pretty big right now. So we need to add a transform node and scale down. So I do it right now. Okay, so let's copy it. Let's paste this to another. Uh, edits and let's set up uh, scale variation to something like 0.5, maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Okay, let's call it our transform. Uh, and uh, we don't really want shadows on our grass, so we'll leave it as disabled. And let's connect our subset to render. Okay, so that's done. And what we need now is a second subset. So the one isn't really exciting, so we'll add a tree. So let's add a mesh, okay, and let's select a mesh, so this tree. Okay, so yeah, we have a tree, and the tree also needs a transform node. As a matter of fact, I know that it's really big, so I will set up it as 0.05. Okay, let's copy it to other scale nodes and also add a variation to 0.5 okay okay let's connect it to a subset so trees are a lot bigger so let's set the footprint to 0.5 frequency 0.5 i think it even should be even higher so let's 0.7 
we want shadows on our subset because this is just our trees they are big and the player can see them really well okay and let's change the color preview to blue for example okay and let's connect a subset to, to, to our render so it seems here everything is done but what we need uh, uh, are textures right now so uh, we can add a standard texture something like that and just select you know your asset and you can see a preview of it and you can connect it to a density texture but we don't really want that right now because we can use our Xylon texture which enable us a real-time preview and editing in a Godot engine so uh, for example we select our splat texture so the example you saw in the beginning of the video uh, will, uh, was using it and we add our second texture which is type of height so our model will be placed correctly uh, in a in a y-axis okay and I think that's pretty much it so you can see our uh, wall node tree right now and you can generate preview so as you can see the blue circles will represent uh, our uh, tree meshes in our stamp and the green circles represent our grass meshes so yeah that's it you can you know decrease the frequency so for example point no point four of our mesh mesh tree and as you can see it should be less of them yeah so let's bring it up again to point seven let's generate as you can see this there's a lot more trees right now compared to before and if we're happy with our stamp we can save it as a resource so to do this you just create click this save as resource and go, let's go to resources and let's name it uh, YouTube okay let's save it and we are done here so what we need to do right now is go back to our 3d scene let's select our biome renderer and just let's let's search for our new generated stamp and put it in a biome uh, variable here okay so the scene right now doesn't regenerate automatically biomes but if we close it and open it again as you can see our biome is changed and it is generated using mesh of our grass and uh, as you can see this, uh, those are our trees and of course we can still edit them in a real time so let's do this let's set up our brush size to something smaller and as you can see it dynamically generates biome uh, okay so I think that's all for now uh, a little bit of a disclaimer this plugin isn't production ready yet it doesn't use any loading uh, it use uh, multi mesh instances to generate this uh, view so it's pretty good performance but uh, there is no uh, <clears throat> loading based on player position and the view distance is the wall map so <clears throat> it will be added in the near future uh, but you need to keep it in mind uh, I hope you like it. If you have any suggestions uh, or questions, please leave a comment. And uh, if you want to contribute, uh, I will post a link to your GitHub page uh, below this video. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope we'll, I will see you again later.